Hello and welcome back to another episode. So this one's all about starting the car. Yes, finally, so excited, but I'm so nervous at the same time because I've done so much to the car, anything could go wrong. I'm particularly worried about fuel leaks and I'm particularly worried about timing. But anyway, stay tuned because later in the episode, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway so you'll be able to see what's up for grabs and how to enter. Um, but before I can turn the key, I've got a few jobs left to do and I think the first thing I'm gonna do is sort the, the weather seal strip thingy to the soft top. Right, so all the way around the lip of this soft top, there's like this, it's almost like a, a weather strip um, and it's, it's gone really, really tacky and gammy and it's coming off in places and it's also in this recess down here. So I think to try and get this off, what I'm gonna do is, I got this for like a pound from Asda. It's, it's just, it's for wiping silicon sealant when you're applying it. So I'm gonna try and get the majority off with this first. This stuff's just falling apart. Ugh. Try a Stanley knife blade just to see if I get any more look. It's really, really gammy. I don't know if this is just old adhesive that's just left. I am having more luck with just a Stanley knife blade. Right, so that's not looking too bad actually. I've been cleaning it up with white spirit and that's managed to get rid of that sticky residue. Now the actual seal for this, the genuine sort of one or the OEM one, is around about sort of 30-ish pounds. So I've gone to Screwfix and got one of these, um, these weather strips and it's, it's for outdoor use, it's for automotive and marine use. So it should be more than good enough for this, I'm hoping. It's about five pounds for two, three and a half meter rolls, seven meters, so more than enough for this. So I'm gonna, it's self-adhesive as well. So I'm gonna go around, stick this to it. Hopefully it sticks. Um, I've cleaned out all the channel, so I'll give that a go. Now, I did think about putting, well, starting the strip at the very beginning and just running one continuous length of it all the way across, but as you lower this down, it's very narrow around about here when it sees. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a strip on this bit and then a separate strip on the center section and then a third strip on this other end. Um, hopefully that if this starts to become a problem, it's not gonna affect the rest of it too much. Right then, another job I've got to do is sort out this air filter housing because this wasn't here originally. What was here was a K&N cold air induction cone thing with a hose going down there to feed it some cold air. Now I had a house fire um, just over a year ago or so and I lost uh, that in the fire. So I went to a scrap yard and I picked up this, this uh, housing here for the air filter. So I went and bought an, an air filter for it and it ended up being too wide. So I must have ordered the wrong one. So I went and ordered another one, which is also too wide. And what's happened here is I've been to the scrapyard and I've got the, the box off of an, NG, an MGF, which is narrower than the MGTF. So I have got the right filters for them. I've just got the wrong box. So I can do one of a few things. I can order the correct filter, but that's still gonna be wrong for this car. Uh, I can get rid of this, this housing and get the wider 
TF1 and then the filters will fit. But to be honest, these filters, well, I've been buying these for about eight or nine pounds. And for a couple of pounds more, I've been and got another cone. It's just off Amazon. It's super cheap. And it does say things like, air induction efficiency has improved drastically. So it must be brilliant. So I'm gonna take this out and put this in. Now this is on this flexible hose thing, so I am gonna to have to come back and replace this with something a bit more rigid because undoubtedly there's gonna be some leakage around here, probably, but it'll do to get it started. I almost forgot the fuel filter. I've gotta take this back out. Need to make sure I'm making note of the direction of the fuel flow that way. Right, that's the fuel filter done. Right, while I am this side, when I disconnected some of the coolant pipe work, this, this sort of T-piece T and a bit piece broke off, so I've got a new one of those to put in. Right, I've got this this union, this T piece, in on three sides, but the fourth, I was like, why is that hole so small compared to that? Well, it turns out that some of the broken off pipe on the old one is still in there, so I need to get that out. So what I think I'll do, I'm going to tap, um, put a tap in there, an M8 tap. So I need to drill it out first. Right, so I've been and bought some second-hand ignition coils, packs, ignition thingies. So I'm going to get them plumbed in now. I've no idea if these work or not. Hopefully they do. We'll find out. Right, so I'm not sure these are the correct ones for this engine because while they're touching the spark plugs, I'm sure, they sit proud, too, too tall. You can see them moving around and they don't seat into that recess. So I don't think they're the right ones. I, um, I think it'll start it, but we'll find out. But anyway, I'm going to put some oil in it and uh, change the oil filter next. Oh, 
Right, so the fuel in this car is at least 14 months old. I've never taken it out, I've never even run the car, so it's at least that old. And, and over time, fuel, petrol, can become stale and go off. And I don't really want to run that through the system. It's going to struggle to start, and even if it did start, it, I could be blocking things up. So I need to get that fuel out. Now, the fuel tank sits behind the driver's and passenger side seat, and I don't think there's a drain plug on it. I'm not aware of one. So I'm going to try and siphon it out. Right, so the plan is to get this hose, this flexible hose, stick it in there, get it all the way down to the bottom of the fuel tank, put the other end in a suitable container, and I've only got a diesel one of those, and some others. Then put in another hose, just into sort of the filler neck, Lock it up with a bit of this and then blow into it and what that should do is force fuel out and then create a bit of a siphon and hopefully that should do it. Now I've got about, I think it's a 50 litre tank on these things so and the, and the needle's just below halfway on the fuel gauge so I think I've got around about 20 litres of it in there so I think I've got enough containers, I'm going to have to take this to the recycling centre um, bit by bit but we'll give it a go. I mean, it's not fast, but it's it's working. So it's stopped, which either means now ideally for a siphon to work you want whatever you're filling up to be lower than what you're draining from so I don't, I'm not very low compared to where the fuel in the tank is so maybe as the levels come down it's starting to equalize a bit either that or it's, it's running out of fuel which would be great but I am expecting more right that's as much as I'm going to get out I think so what I will do if there is anything left in there any stale fuel left in there I'm going to top it up with you know, some fresh fuel and hopefully that will dilute it and not cause me too many problems when I come to start it. One of the other jobs I need to do before I go much further is to put some coolant in it but I'm not going to put any coolant in it because if I've got any leaks as one of you suggested if I've got any leaks then there's a waste of coolant so I'm going to put some water in it when I start it it's not going to get hot or anything like that so and by putting the water in first and draining it it might help flush a little bit of the schmoo or whatever might be in there from working on all the different things so um, now this isn't the original uh, coolant bottle and um, the original I lost in the house fire so you'll see this hanging off now I went and picked this up from a scrapyard and I didn't know at the time that they were different so this, this one doesn't accept a coolant level sensor of which I bought another one. There's no hole in the bottom for it. This is what would connect onto that. So at the minute it, it, it's just a plain old reservoir, nothing special. So I do need to get another one of those so I can get the, uh, the sensor plugged into it. But for now it'll do just fine for pouring some water in. Um, also I'm not going to show here the actual bleeding of the system. Um, I think I'll cover that in another video when I actually come to do the, the proper coolant. Right, all that's left to do is put the battery back in the car, but before that, onto the giveaway draw for this episode. 
Now this car has been outside for well over a year and as you can hear, the paint works like sandpaper so I need to clay the entire car. So I went online and I found these clay bars, it's a pack of three, really well reviewed online, not sponsored by anyone. Uh, never heard of the manufacturer but they're really well reviewed. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning one of these then all you got to do is leave a comment in the comment section below and then every comment will be entered into the draw next episode. So before I put the battery in, I'm going to give these uh, the inside of these contacts a bit of a clean with some scotch Bright, just so there's a good reasonable contact. Kind of nervous. Oh, that was a bit underwhelming. Right, now to start it. Keys. Oh. <laughs> That's locked. That's unlocked. Attempt number two. I wonder if it's not firing. Could be those ignition coils, those dodgy ones. Hmm. Nope. Right. So I've scanned. I've scanned the car using an OBD2 tool, and I'm getting two codes back. I'm getting a P0300 random multiple cylinder misfire detected and also a p0313 which is misfire detected with low fuel now i mean the fuel i did drain the fuel out of it it looks like i got the majority of it the fuel gauge is barely registering anything at all so i'm going to put another two cans in another two well, 10 liters in to see if that uh, helps make at least one of these go away right so i've now got <laughs> Just above, just about a quarter of a tank in, so see if that's made a difference. Nope. Right, so I'm going to test to see if there's any fuel getting well through at least most of the system. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect the fuel line that comes out of the fuel filter just because it's a convenient place to do it and try and eliminate that as uh, being a problem. So I'm going to try and disconnect this and then put a bottle around the end so that when I turn it over, if it's collecting fuel, I'll be able to see it. Now it's wet in there, so at least some fuel has gotten through. That's a positive sign. Right, I'm not going to turn the engine over because it's clearly just dumped a load of fuel in there, so at least the, the fuel pump's fine. The filter's the right way around, the lines are okay there. So now I'm gonna check for spark. I'm just gonna remove the air filter, the new one that I put on, just in case it's kind of restricting the airflow. I know it's a long shot, but I thought it's easy to do. Let's give it a go. That's interesting, it tried to start then. There's a little bit of a little bit of a woof. Literally hot off the press or hot from Amazon HQ. 
hopefully this will help diagnose the problem. So I've picked up this uh, inline ignition spark tester to be able to test that there's a spark getting through on each of these leads coils. Now I think this should be pretty straightforward. Pull out a plug, put one end on the spark plug and the plug you've just taken out on the other end of this and then you should see a little flash in there every time a spark is sent. So if I do this far end one, because this comes off one of the two packs, if that isn't getting a spark, then it could be an issue with the pack, then I'll test the pack. So I wasn't getting any reading off that one, so I've plugged it into another, another uh, onto another spark plug, see if I get any difference. Right, so what I've decided to do, because I'm, I wasn't sure that this inline spark plug tester thing was making contact with the spark plug very well. So that's jammed on there. That's that's on there. This spark plug is making contact with the. The head, so it's grounded out, so we should, if this works, see a spark here and this light up at the same time. Now that's interesting. I didn't see this light up, but I definitely saw a spark here, so I'm going to test the other three in much the same way as this, just to make sure we're definitely getting spark. Alright, so I didn't see anything on there, so... I'm suspecting there's something wrong with this coil pack. Now, when I bought this set off eBay, it came unexpectedly with another another two. Now, these do look slightly different. This has got a much flexible bit on the end, whereas this one's rigid to a point and then flexible. So I don't know if there's a massive difference between the two, but I'll try this one and then the other one to see if there's any difference. Right, I've been through every spark plug and every lead and tested them and I've got a spark on all of them. Now, there's supposed to be a rhythm to the sparks, there's timing isn't this, but, and I don't think they're consistent, but try it anyway. Right. <laughs> So as you can tell, days are moving on now. Um, what I'm going to do to try and diagnose this a bit further is spray some cold start spray into the intake and see if it'll start. If it starts, it probably means it's not an issue with the timing or the ignition side of things. It could be a fuel pressure problem or an injector problem. If it doesn't start, then fuel and injector is probably okay and it's more spark, timing, maybe even compression. Right, so it's not starting on this cold start stuff, which is kind of a good thing, I think, because it, it probably means I've got an issue with the spark side of stuff. I'm not long finished work, um, and I've been and picked up the new coil packs that I've ordered. Pretty sure it's the coil packs. So I'm gonna quickly, before it snows again today, put those on and give it a quick go, fingers crossed. Right, so these are brand new. They're not genuine ones. They're not even really OEM ones. I think that's what you call it. They are aftermarket ones, but they are brand new. So I'm just gonna swap them out. I, am, I have ordered some more leads um, as well to the other two spark plugs, but they haven't arrived yet. So I'm hoping it's just a coil pack issue. It's the old one. It's the new one. They look very, 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 very similar. Which is a good thing, I think. Oh, is that snow again? Plug fitting's very tight.
Right. So I've got the air filter off. They're on. Fingers crossed. See if it makes a difference. It coughed, but then nothing. What can it be? Hello. So, you may notice the surroundings are a little bit different to the last scene, and that's because I've moved, and I managed to get the MG here on the back of a trailer, um, because it wasn't running or MOT'd or anything like that. Um, and since then, I've done, well, nothing. Um, so what I'm going to do, oops, strike that. I have taken the battery out, I fully charged it overnight and put it back in. That's it. So what I think I'm going to do is start it, see if anything's changed in the time it's been stood still um, and go from there. I think I'll take the roof down though because it's quite sunny today. Right. <laughs> this isn't going to make any difference whatsoever, is it? But <coughs> out of gear, clutch down. Oh. Smell fuel, but it, it kind of wanted to go. I don't know. Could it be a problem with the crank sensor? Could it be? I don't think it's a problem with fuel because we're seeing fuels get into the spark plugs. Um, I don't think it's spark because I've replaced the leads and the coil packs and the spark plugs. I've checked, even checked that the spark plug gaps are correct at one mil. So I am struggling. Um, so this isn't going to be the video where we start it. Uh, I'm hoping that's going to be the next video. But don't forget about the giveaway. If you want to be in the giveaway for the clay bars, do leave a comment in the comment section below and then we'll, um, all those names will go into the hat to be drawn in, hopefully, the next video. So uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you then.